Hey guys, I'm John Setzler. Welcome back to Atlanta Grill Company. Today we're going to fire up the Kamado Joe Classic with the Dojo and we are going to make a man cave version of a Chicago deep dish pizza. So let's get started. We're going to get started by making our pizza sauce. Uh, I've got a pan over some medium heat here. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil and bring this olive oil up to temperature. And when that oil gets nice and hot, I've got a medium white onion that I've diced fairly finely. And we're going to saute this onion in this olive oil until the onion becomes translucent. And after those onions get started, I'm going to add uh, one clove of finely minced garlic that I've run on my microplane grater. And I'm going to add just a pinch of red pepper flakes, a little bit of dried oregano, a little bit of dried basil, and a couple tablespoons of tomato paste. And we're going to mix this all together. And then I'm going to dump in my tomatoes. I've taken one can of San Marzano tomatoes that are whole and I just reached in there with my hand and crushed these tomatoes and uh, you know leave them kind of chunky with some consistency so we are going to bring this up to a slow simmer and once this starts to simmer I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt you're gonna want to salt this to taste and then we're just gonna simmer this stirring it fairly frequently uh, to thicken it up a bit so you're going to want to simmer this until it thickens up nicely. And what you're looking for in a pan like this is when you draw your spoon across, it forms a line like that that is either very slow to fill back in or doesn't fill back in at all. That's about the consistency you're looking for. So you can set this aside until you're ready to make your pizza. And if you can make this part a day in advance, I highly recommend doing that. The first thing I want to do to get started making our dough is I'm going to put my sugar in the bottom of the bowl of my stand mixer and then I'm going to add my water and I'll give you all these quantities in the video description and then I'm going to add my yeast and we're going to let that sit for about 10 minutes. And in another small mixing bowl here I've got my all-purpose flour. I'm going to add my cornmeal and I'm going to add my salt and I'm just going to take a fork and kind of mix those together where they're fairly well mixed. And after my yeast has had a chance to bloom, I'm going to dump in our mixture of flour, cornmeal, and salt. And then I'm going to bring that bowl back up and turn the mixer on to let that come together. And as that comes together, I'm going to drizzle in my olive oil and just let that continue to mix. And once that dough comes together into a mass like that, I'm going to let this continue to knead for about eight minutes. And after I've let that knead for about eight more minutes, I'm just going to stop the mixer and we're going to get that dough out of the bowl. So I've got another greased bowl here and I'm just going to take my dough ball and work it into a tight ball. And I'm going to roll it around in here get it coated in oil and I'm going to cover that bowl with plastic and we're going to let this rise for 60 to 90 minutes or so until that dough ball is doubled in size. Okay we're about 30 minutes into the rise on that dough so now I want to light my grill because I know I want this guy good and solidly preheated before we start so I've got a good bit of charcoal in my basket there and I've lit it with two fire starters and then I'm just going to set the dojo in place, right? And I'm going to get it lined up nicely. I am also going to set a little stainless steel trivet that I have right here on this pizza stone because I know this stone's going to get hotter than my ambient temp, and I don't want to cook this particular pizza directly on a stone that's that hot. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and close the dome lid, and then I'm going to close my top vent and you can either use the lower vent or use your temperature control system 
to uh, set this guy up to run at about 425 degrees. My dough has doubled up nicely here. This took about an hour and 20 minutes. So now I want to start getting this pizza put together. This is a pizza for a 12 inch pan. You can use a 12 inch cast iron pan. I have a uh, aluminum deep dish pizza pan here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nice coat of olive oil on the bottom of this pan and I'm just going to spread it out. I want that up on the sides as well. But I want a nice heavy liberal coat of olive oil there. And then I'm going to turn this dough out directly into that pan. And I'm just going to use my fingers to work this dough out to the edges of the pan. This dough may turn out to be a little elastic, which is normal, but that's okay. We're going to stretch it out and we want to work it, you know, up onto the sides of the pan as well. And it may, it may fight you a little bit here, but that's okay. Because what we're going to do is just give it, get it most of the way there. And then I'm going to cover this back up with plastic. And we're going to let this sit here and do a second short proof for about 20 or 30 minutes. Okay, I've let this rest out some more. And I've kind of worked around the pan here, uh, bringing that dough up the sides of the pan as far as you can go. It doesn't have to go all the way to the top, but you want it up there close. So just kind of spread it out there. And then we're going to move on to the cheese. The next thing that's going to go on this pizza is a good bit of cheese. I'm going to start out with a nice fat layer of mozzarella. And then we're going to go behind that. I've got some monster that uh, I think would be really great on this pizza. So we're going to put a layer of that around here as well. We we'll get that last piece on there. And then we've got mild Italian sausage. And I'm going to try. I don't know how successfully I'm going to be able to do this. I want to kind of press this out into a disc and get that spread fairly evenly all the way across the bottom. That looks about good. And then the next thing we're going to do is put that sauce on that we made. And we're going to spread it evenly. I'm just going to use all of this sauce. And we're going to get it spread out as evenly as possible all the way around the top of this pizza. And then the next step here is I'm going to put on some Pecorino Romano. Uh, I'm going to grate this on with my microplane grater. If you like parm, use parm. If you like this, use this. Use whatever you like. There's no rules here because, like I said, this is a man cave version of a Chicago deep dish pizza. So I'll promise you that no Chicagoans were harmed in the making of this pizza. Their feelings might be hurt, but that's about it. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drizzle on just a little extra virgin olive oil on the top of this guy, about like that. And we're ready to go to the grill. Okay, our grill's nice and hot. We're cruising along right at 425, so I'm going to lift the lid. We're going to put that bad boy right on there, and we're going to close up. And we're going to go for 25 to 35 minutes until that's done. I've been going just a little over 30 minutes here, maybe 32 or 33 minutes. And I'm pretty daggum impressed with how this thing looks. So I'm going to take this off the grill. We're going to let it sit for just a couple of minutes. And then we'll take it out of the pan. Okay, I've gone ahead and taken this out of the pan. Uh, and we need to let it set up for about 10 minutes or so before we uh, cut into this. Okay guys, here's some Chicago deep dish perfection. I have gone ahead and cut some of that. This thing is absolutely beautiful 
want you to just have a look at that. It's cooled down enough, and this is dinner here tonight at the Man Cave. So, guys, you're going to have to give this a try. Let me know what you think. And until next time, this is John Setzler with Atlanta Grill Company.